Okay, so <clears throat> this problem is going to be asking about the area between two curves. So the square root of x plus two and one divided by x plus one. And if you want to figure out which one's on top and which one's on bottom, because remember it's top minus bottom, uh, just start plugging boundary points into these things and see, well, which one is really bigger? Okay, so if I plug zero into this one, I'm just going to get one. If I plug zero into this, I'll get the square root of two, which is bigger than one. But if I plug two into this one, I get one third. If I plug two into this one, I'm going to get the square root of four, which is two, and two is definitely bigger than one third. So that means that the square root of x plus two is on top and one divided by x plus one is on bottom. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, when I integrate these things, okay. So this is going to, all right, so when we integrate the square root of x plus two, this becomes x plus two raised to the three divided by two divided by three divided by two. and minus the natural log. I don't always use absolute value signs, but we'll use it in this case. And these are going to be evaluated at zero and at two. Okay. So <clears throat> that becomes two plus two raised to the three divided by two divided by three divided by two minus now zero plus two to the three divided by two, divided by three, divided by two, and then minus, let's do this with parentheses, and the natural log of two plus one, and minus the natural log of zero plus one. And this is a perfectly acceptable answer for uh, this class. <clears throat> um, a lot of, um, you know, probably in high school and a lot of other places, people will, uh, will tell you, oh, no, you need to get it as simplified as possible um, uh, so that you can see the answer. In this class, I'm going to try to get rid of that tradition because Whenever we get into infinite series and stuff like that, if you start multiplying numbers together, you're never going to see the pattern. So since this is a correct answer, you wrote this on your test, I'm counting it right. But if you take your correct answer and then start manipulating it and mess it up and you get to some very weird answer at the end, I'm going to take off a point because you had the correct answer, but then you messed it up. Okay. All right. So. The first two questions on this test are going to be area between curves and um, a U substitution problem. So let's go ahead and we'll include the uh, U substitution portion on um, this video before we uh, move on to the volumes of revolution. Okay. So <clears throat> the next question on the test and U substitution is really a calculus one issue but for this first test let's just review it a little bit all right so the next question just asks us to evaluate that limit okay all right now remember with u substitution it's generally the function that's trapped inside of another function that you want to let u equal so I'm going to let u equal x cubed. All right, so b u would be 3x squared dx, but I don't have a 3 in this problem. So du divided by 3 would equal now x squared dx, x squared dx, x squared dx. So this is going to become the integral of e to the u, now du divided by 3. Okay. 
So that's e to the u divided by three plus a constant, which is going to equal e to the x cubed divided by three and plus a constant. And remember, when we're doing a u substitution, we're trying to uh, accommodate for the chain rule. And so if I took the derivative of this guy, if I took the derivative of e to the x cubed, well, the derivative of e is just e, but what is it going to spit out? It's going to spit out a 3x squared. So this 3 that is appearing on bottom, it, it's going to account for that. And so that when you have uh, the chain rule spit out a 3x squared, the 3 and the 3 will cancel each other out. 